Uh, hi everyone, happy Thany birthday, Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Clockwork Indigo EP. This is going to be raw, so I'm going to be reading, I'm going to be talking, no editing. Clockwork Indigo is the musical collaborative project of Flatbush Zombies and the Underachievers, two underground New York hip-hop outfits right now, two of my favorites in the New York underground at the moment. They have both released some projects recently that I encourage you check out. They are on tour. So to help promote this tour, they decided they were going to release a little bit of original music along with it, which I think is a fantastic idea. And this original music has taken the form of this new five-track EP, which is about 20 minutes or so. And on this EP, uh, I guess, I don't know, listening to it, I like it, but I don't really think there's any uh, kind of aha moment that when I listen to this thing, I'm like, oh man, like, this never could have happened if they were making music separately. It just doesn't occur. You know, I just feel like they're coming on these tracks and just doing these songs together. The EP feels really promotional, you know, and, and, and that's all. Not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but it feels like it was made specifically for helping out this tour. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like everything Flatbush Zombies and the Underachievers, everything they've had to offer stylistically up until this point uh, has been heard on this EP. You know, if you want to hear them at their best, I would recommend you listen to their, you know, solo efforts. However, these tracks aren't really bad. Uh, I don't think this EP is proof of these guys coming together and, and having incredible chemistry or inventing something entirely new. What I think this EP proves is just how well these guys complement each other, how much these guys are on the same page, I suppose. The, the lyrics, the verses all over this record. They are aggressive, they're druggy, occasionally they're kind of socially aware, socially conscious, a little subversive, kind of like on the song System, which has one of the best hooks on the entire record, one of the most melodic hooks on the entire record. It's a bit of a shame that this track is so short. And on nearly every track here, you have verses from Issa Gold and Zombie Juice and Eric Ark Elliott and AK and Michi Darko. So, you know, everyone in these groups are here. And I'm assuming that a bulk, if not all of the production is handled by Eric Ark Elliott because he is the Flatbush Zombies sort of go-to producer and member slash rapper. So, you know, uh, there you go. You know, you have production handled in-house. And the production actually is quite great. I think on the butterfly effect, the soaring theme melody, very whimsical, all over that track is beautiful, it's wonderful. The boom bat beat on that thing is very spacious. I wish the pacing of the track was a little bit faster. I feel like this song is kind of the, the definition of an overly long and sort of just generally long-winded hip-hop tune. It would have been nicer if maybe some of that length turned up on the track system. But generally all the songs here are, are nicely length and don't really, you know, try patience or, uh, or, or anything like that. Again, I feel like these guys just complement each other really well stylistically that I suppose they didn't really need to come up with any conceptual tracks because a lot of what they rap about sort of overlaps a lot of the time in personality and theme and tone, though there are some tracks like Benefit Concert, for example, um, where it seems like, you know, moshing is uh, most definitely a theme that comes up again and again and again in the ad-libs and the verses on this track. As far as some of the other production on here, um, I love the song L-U-A-M, which has this lead melody on it, which sounds like it was lifted, or is just very similar to that of Drake's Started From The Bottom, but once the beat kicks in, the song has a very different vibe with rattling hi-hats and just really bombastic kick drums. There's also, again, Benefit Concert, which I think has some of the most just overbearing heavy drums on the entire EP. It's a really killer track. And uh, yeah, I suppose, you know, that's sort of the lyrical content. That uh, is uh, the instrumental content. Um, I feel like a lot of what I'm hearing on this EP is stuff that these guys have executed before separately, and right now they're just kind of doing it together. They're doing it together really well, uh, but you know, it's not anything altogether new. I like it, 
but I feel like I just kind of like it as a fan and I like both of these artists separately. And I guess even though this collection of songs isn't like completely blowing my mind or anything, it is nice to hear two artists that I like coming together and complimenting each other really well. This EP isn't incredible when it comes to hooks or songwriting or anything like that. It's just, you know, one verse after another. You know, all these guys are great spitters, so they're really on the same page technically. So it's not like you're getting, you know, some great verses here and there, and then there's a garbage verse popping up that's just kind of an ear sore or something like that. That's not really the case. You know, you're just getting one solid verse after another from all of these guys. And, uh, you know, again, I think it was great that they were able to come together and complement each other so well. I'm feeling a light to decent seven on this thing. Tran. Zishin, if you've given this EP a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And um, that's it. Anthony Fantano, music, forever. Also, you can head down to the description box to check a review of the new The World is a Beautiful Place and I'm No Longer Afraid to Die EP Between Bodies a week before it lands on this channel.